Hi, I'm Darren Brandon from Circulite. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, actually on the west side of Cleveland in North Olmsted. I have a twin brother and an older sister, and we are all a very musical family. Everyone was taking lessons. Uh, everybody started on piano, and then everyone kind of uh, moved on to different areas of uh, instrumentation. I, of course, started drums shortly after the piano lessons. My brother uh, wanted to play drums, but uh, I guess there was only uh, one drummer allowed in the family, so I was the one. And he ended up playing guitar, and my sister was playing uh, oboe and some wind instruments, vocals, and they're all very, very talented. The very first musical recollection I could think of was, believe it or not, was Herman's Hermits. My sister bought the album, I believe, and, and she would play it, and I really liked it. But I think my life changed dramatically when she came home with Thick as a Brick. I don't know what it was about that record, but that's the, the album that really kind of pushed me into this realm of music. And I would listen to this and listen to it. And then after that, I, I just was crazy for anything Jethro Tull did. And at the time, I was, uh, you know, kind of a kid. I didn't have a lot of money, so I would beg and plead my mom and dad to buy me this record, buy me that record. And I remember uh, two other albums that really were an eye-opener because of the whole progressive rock element. You know, in, in school, there would other be like-minded people, and we would talk, and they would go, oh, you like that? You should listen to Fragile by Yes, and that was another one. And I remember listening to Roundabout and hearing... <laughs> Hearing Bill Bruford's snare drum, I, I, I heard it for the first time. And I go, what in the world? I've never, I've never heard anything like that. And he was a big influence uh, from there. And because of that record, Fragile, I had heard it, that Bill Bruford was touring with Genesis. And that started my lifelong obsession with Genesis and their music. And that, of all the bands, is my biggest influence. Everything that they've done, and particularly uh, Phil Collins, is very evidenced in my playing and even more so in that, that line of thinking is Jerry Murata with Peter Gabriel. Uh, something seeped into my DNA through those two players, and I can't help it. it, it whenever I play, it's kind of seeing music through their eyes. Where I got started as far as learning, like I said, with my brother and sister, we all started private lessons. So I started with lessons on drums uh, and piano. Um, we were encouraged, uh, maybe a little bit more than just encouraged, to be in the school bands and school orchestras. So I was uh, introduced to, you know, the different types of percussion instruments, especially tuned percussion, which was something that I kind of gravitated towards in all the orchestras and bands that I was playing in. And I think having that background with playing the piano kind of helped. So playing xylophones and marimbas and stuff like that was a big big part of that whole learning. I did travel to California for uh, a while and I did go to a school out there, uh, but this was more for recording, uh, engineering and such. So that kind of sparked that interest into, you know, trying to get the music that I wanted to kind of get out there of mine onto whatever, you know, thing that I could get onto. And at that time it was tape. So I did go to school for that. And I did end up leaving California and moving back to Cleveland. And that's when I kind of really kind of pushed the envelope in getting, you know, my own studio happening uh, and, and just really started focusing on uh, writing music. When I was in California, I was in a band and that was when I wrote my first song. Uh, it's called Nearad. That's right. My name backwards. Um, and we did play that and perform that part at our prog stock uh, performance. It's an instrumental that we had done with Andy and myself playing like a little duet thing, and we ended up ending that piece with that song. When I eventually moved to New York, I wasn't playing drums at all. I didn't have a kit. I didn't really do anything. I had kind of lost interest. And I did end up giving my this drum set, actually, to my brother, and he had it in his basement. And I said, you know what? Maybe I should start playing. So he and I ended up meeting halfway between New York and uh, Cleveland, and I, I got my drums back. And I set those up in a room where I used to work. Uh, it was great. It was kind of a, a nice big building. No one was really working there except for me. So I had a room, and I, I said, you know what? I'm really into kind of video editing, so what else? What can I do? What kind of things can I, you know, video uh, so I can edit? 
And that's got me started with whole YouTube thing. So I ended up, um, you know, getting three cameras. I got all the microphones and I got, you know, the all, all the gear ready to kind of uh, start recording myself playing to all those songs that I love. And so I, so it gave me something to edit. So I did all those. I did a whole bunch of those videos and they're still up there now. But what happened when I put them up on YouTube? A couple people from this progressive rock tribute band down in Gray saw it and they invited me to, you know, audition. And that's where I met three of the members of Downing Gray. And that was where I met Andy because eventually he became our keyboard player in the band. And that's when we did, we kind of started working together on learning all that music. I think the turning point for Downing Gray moving towards a circuit line, a more original project, I think for me, and I think Andy would agree, is when we, we learned three hours, three hours of progressive rock too much. And we just said, you know what, why don't we try to write a song and let's move towards that. And that's what sparked that whole move into original music. Why put the time into learning and perfecting, you know, covers? And I believe me, I don't take anything against anybody that wants to do that. I just feel that I'd rather spend more time kind of crafting our own music and moving towards that goal. That way we can not only perform it, we could record it, we could release it. And it, it's just a much more fulfilling endeavor for you know everybody in this band there was a while a decade ago maybe two decades ago where i wasn't playing at all i had gone through a band or two where we had really kind of tried to make it you know we were writing it was in my studio in cleveland and we had a pretty good band you know we did some covers but we were doing originals and i really put all my effort into recording the songs and crafting those songs and at that time there was no digital anything there was no youtube there was no real internet it was all about the kind of old school of releasing a record so, you know, you'd have to record the stuff, get it on tape, and then maybe press it into a record. You know, I had paid for all that, and it just didn't work out. So I was very kind of down on music. So I just kind of sold everything and just didn't play for a long time. Until I moved to New York, and like I said before, I started back, you know, recording, you know, YouTube videos, and then moving on to Down and Gray, and then Circuline. As far as, like, getting you know, emotionally attached to music and how I write music. There, There's a weird thing. I think a lot of musicians, maybe they feel this, but it's kind of hits me right here when I get emotional, when I hear stuff. It's really kind of a strange thing when I hear a part, like if Andy brings something in or, you know, Alec or Matt or, or Natalie or Billy, you know, it's, it's something that kind of hits me or doesn't hit me kind of in the core of my being. <laughs> and I don't really kind of analyze it too much. I go, I, I know that works. That part works for me. Somehow it's hitting me and it makes me feel something. So when I'm writing music on the keyboards or if I'm coming up with something on the, uh, on the drums, you know, it's something that just kind of uh, feels good to me. And I'm not trying to do anything in particular it's just you know kind of a free-flowing idea thing and it's really great working with someone like andy because he's always over there going oh my god that sounds great oh my god that sounds great where i might not hear it but he heard something and it's kind of reversed like he'll be futzing around on his keyboards and i'll go oh my god we we have to stop there we have to do that because that was really good that little you know kind of eight measure thing that you just did we can explore that i think a lot of people a lot of musicians kind of draw from certain parts of their lives and you know kind of if you're down in the dumps if you're you know doing really well i do kind of i guess kind of get some inspiration from that but it's not always from that i kind of like wall myself off from the outer you know parts of my life and just really focus on what we're doing in this studio and kind of draw from that and the people in the room Recently, we've been very, very fortunate, very lucky to assemble this band. Uh, we wanted this band the way it is right now with these people in it for a while. Andy and I have been scouting <laughs> and we found the right guitar player. Finally, we got Alec, Alec Darson. He's a, he's a wonderful person, incredible player. He adds a, a, a very new fresh dimension to what we're doing and we needed that desperately and we just recruited i guess recruited matt dorsey we've always loved him uh he's a, a great guy and we've seen him with sound of contact and he's a wonderful bass player he's a singer he's a songwriter he he does it all and we're very fortunate to bring that warmth to this band and i think now this will be moving forward this will be the the team the band that that we're really kind of 
I hope, move us to that next level because it is just a phenomenal, phenomenal writing team. We've got Natalie now writing lyrics and coming up with these awesome vocal lines, and it really will be a new kind of chapter for this band. It's really going to be something, and we're all looking very much forward to completing this record, this third record, this year, and getting out, we're hoping, you know, maybe next year and, and sharing it with everybody. Of course, we, we couldn't do any of this creation where, you know, any part of this musical journey that we're on without, you know, people like you that, that really love music, that really like this type of music and supports bands, you know, by buying their CDs, their DVDs, their Blu-rays, their T-shirts, their whatever, and, and, and makes a real effort to kind of support bands when they go out on the road. It's great because I know how important music was when I was growing up. I'm Darren Brannon from Circuline, and this is our Meet the Band series. Yeah.